everybody good morning welcome to stock trading pro today's stock market live has a ton of stuff to talk about we have earnings we have the fed next week we have what we call passing the baton three different sectors over the last month have taken the leadership role in the market now it's just a question of whether or not we're seeing short covering a bear market trap or are we seeing the start of an early move to the upside where it's going to surprise everybody where pretty much every headline you saw for the last 30 days has been doom, gloom, how bad the market's going to get, how big the recession's going to be, how we're going to go down another 50% in the stock market. Lo and behold, we're getting more good news. And more importantly, the market is reacting positively to the good news. Everybody knows that classic maxim that when the market is in a bear market and has good news, that good news typically gets ignored and we go down anyway, regardless of how good that news is. We're not seeing that right now. And I got to tell you, it's pretty exciting. There's some really good short-term opportunities right now on the bullish side of things. Goldman Sachs just reported we've got a bunch of earnings we're going to talk about right now. IBM after the close, Bank of America early this morning, Citigroup last week, which just exploded to the upside for 14%. There's a really changing of the guard, and it's happening very quickly right now. And what we need to do is determine whether or not this is a complete change of order flow or nothing more than a relief of all of the bearish news. Because we have the Fed next week as well into the equation. Is it going to be a point? Is it going to be three quarters? I think it's universally agreed it's going to be three quarters of a point right now. But we've got a lot to dig into. Today, we're going to set up what we're going to be looking at for this entire week. We're going to dig a little bit into sector rotation. Uh, I'd also love to hear what you're looking to trade this week. Let's actually have a little bit of guts right now. Say what stocks that you're looking to be a buyer of this week, and we'll do a little bit of a deep dive on those two as well. We have a ton of stuff to talk about today, so stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me here today, everybody. I just want to go right over to the screen because it's very important that we set the tone uh, for right out of the gate today and what we plan to look at, um, how the week is unfolding. There's a lot of good news coming out right now. We're going to get into the news, but first we want to set up the bigger picture um, order flow and determine whether or not we are out of the woods uh, or is this just reacting based on short-term earnings and then the Fed's going to come in and squash it next week. Next week with the Fed is a really, really big thing because if you go back to last week with the CPI and the PPI, the numbers were not good. And we rallied anyway. So the question now is, is all the bad news priced in in the big picture? And we might not get the soft landing, but will we have now a short term reversal that is going to make everybody start to look to dig in? Let's see. Lance is looking at Neo this week. OK, very cool. Uh, Brian Carr, good morning. How's it going, pal? Always great to see you. Uh, DocuSign actually has a big story. We're actually going to take a look at that this morning as well. Uh, let's see, Raphael, Citigroup and Cat. Caterpillar has been a dog recently, but Citigroup has been on fire. Uh, let's see, uh, Richard, good morning. Thanks for being here with us today. Uh, NVIDIA, okay, yep, a couple of people had mentioned that about the um, about that group. Uh, let's see, uh, Juan, CRSP and Chewy. I do like the Chewy setup today. We're going to take a look at that as well. Oh, yeah, Frank, BYND exploded. You know what? Let's actually start to pull these guys up on the screen just to give everybody uh, an idea of what we're going to be taking a look at um, here. Um, obviously, we're going to head into sector rotation this week. We've got a ton of earnings. IBM is after the close today. Uh, Goldman Sachs has already port reported. Bank of America has already reported. Uh, but let's, let's actually take a look at some of the ideas that a few people are calling out right now. Um, NVIDIA. Uh, which is the one that Frank has called that. Now, NVIDIA is actually down, uh, still in bearish order flow. But one thing I want to point out here, and this is kind of important, um, you need to, especially over longer term trades, there's two ways of looking at longer term ideas. There is um, investing, which would be more value plays. It's actually, there's two, two parts of investing in the stock market. There's, there's the growth plays where you're buying stocks with higher PE ratios, you're buying them high, looking for them to go higher, expecting that growth to continue. So you're actually buying into that growth momentum, or you're looking at a value play, which is where the value of that company is down, which was a big thing about Citigroup last week, if you remember. Let's actually just pull that up uh, for one second. Citigroup, which was up 14% at one point last week, and obviously the volume was just off the charts, literally, no pun intended. Uh, but the value side of the Citigroup equation was a lot of people were talking about the book value on Citigroup, where the stock was actually trading 
lower than book value, the liquidation value. And we saw a little bit of good numbers last week. Citigroup just carried the baton. So I actually want to head on back. We're going to get into everybody's ideas um, in a second right here. Uh, I just want to talk about this because this is a really important uh, thing to be looking at right now because you have to be asking yourself, um, while we're going to be looking at this, while we're going to be picking this up, if what we're looking at right now is telling us whether or not we are reversed, just starting to potentially reverse, or still kind of in the middle of nowhere. The way I'm looking at things right now, it's a much shorter time frame trade for me right now. The best swing trades have been kind of that three to five day window. The longer time frame ones, they're still there, but you have to really be working that position. But let's take a look at the big, the big picture in the market right now, and we're going to break this down. This side of the equation over here is the S&P 500, the SPY, the QQQ, and the diamonds, right? Uh, let me actually get myself off of the picture there so you can actually see it. Uh, and the diamonds down here in the picture. So we clearly have still strong moves to the downside. So what we're looking for and what we actually mapped out um, heading into this week, and if we go back over to the SPY and go back over to the SPY on the weekly chart, you can clearly see that we're still in this downtrend, which started and it was a big six-week downtrend. Now, the big thing that we're looking for in the market is we're looking for this kind of price action where we need this week to go well bid. So if you're a regular view of our channel, you know that we do not guess, we don't predict, we just pay attention to what's going on and then we look for a spot to piggyback on top of that. Right now, we are bearish to neutral at best. Last week's rally was pretty impressive. We actually opened lower and bounced, opened lower and bounced, gapped higher and, and kept going. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of last week, we'll actually take a look just in case anybody wasn't on top of that last week or wasn't trading. Uh, let me actually go to the daily chart here in the SPY. We had a bearish gap and bounce, a bearish gap and bounce, and then a bullish gap and kept going. It is driving the bears, the people that doom and gloom, the stock market crash people. It's driving them crazy right now. Now, I want to be clear about this. We are in the first signs of a potential reversal. So if you remember what we spend a lot of time talking about is that if you can't say it's an obvious bullish action, that means that the worst case scenario is you have to start catching it while it's reversing. And if it starts to reverse, that means if it's the first sign of a reversal, that should be first position size. Now, that means lower position size. So I'm just going to use some round numbers because managing the downside in a reversal, in a potential reversal, in a potential change of trend Managing the downside is job number one, which means that the smart trader, the smart investor would be working their way into that position. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about investing, swing trading, or active trading. Either way, the best positions on the long side right now have to be working in because the big picture is to the downside. So what does that mean? That means that any swing trades we're looking to initiate, whether it's Citigroup, Wells Fargo actually bounced last week and really did not have good numbers. I think that it was just carried uh, on the back of some of the other good bank earnings. You can see it's actually up again this morning. Uh, let's actually get into the numbers. There was actually some pretty good numbers this morning. If you didn't happen to see it, Goldman Sachs, um, Q2 earnings per share 773, which beats 770, uh, 725, which beat it by a handy amount. So this, this is actually coming in from Benzinga. Uh, earnings, uh, as far as revenue also came in, it came in a much better as well. So this is a 20 2.93 decrease over sales from the last year. So the short-term numbers were good. The long-term numbers were not year over year, but the market is discounting that right now. So my gosh, um, how many people here have been involved in a bear market? I know a lot of people are new to the markets, but this is pretty interesting. I'm not, I want to be clear. As we said last Friday, when we we're talking about the tech stock rally and financials heading into the day, the bear market is not done. It takes more than just one or two days of price action to reverse an entire market. So what we have right now is we got to be sitting up in your seat and saying, OK, let me pay attention to the news. And it's going to be a either a short term trade or which could be a little bit more position size in the way that I do things if it's short term and you're managing risk on that short term period. But if it's a little bit longer term trade where maybe it's a swing trade or maybe it's a longer term position trade from one earning season to the next maybe even turn that into an investment. The smarter way to do that because of the volatility, especially with how big some of these stocks rallied last week, Citigroup was up 14% last week. That is a glorious time to be a trader, but it's also a monster move that 
what's the risk reward on buying after stock is up 14%? Could it go up higher? Sure. But if you're buying here and your reward is the same amount, you're basically going to be a one-to-one -one break even trader on that. So it's not the greatest risk reward until the stock pauses a little bit. We're also going to talk about Boeing today, but let's break it down on some of the ideas. Let's actually start out with the sector rotation, uh, which is obviously something we take care of here every day first, right? So breaking down the sector rotation, we've been talking about healthcare for a while. Consumer defensive last week, if you remember, we talked about Costco breakouts. So if we, last week we talked about a Costco breakout. We talked about Pepsi being strong and we talked about Walmart finally jumping back in there. So I want to map those out. Costco is a little bit beyond the optimal entry and Walmart is now getting to the point where it's just starting to break out. So from a risk reward perspective for this week, Walmart has a little bit better profit potential for what you need to risk. Costco has already gone, I believe, $40. So that really has kind of used up most of what it normally does in a swing. So I'm waiting for Costco to pause. Pepsi and McDonald's both resting at breakout level as well. So let's actually take a look at that group of stocks and we'll map those out before we head into the earnings. So if we take a look at Costco here, and obviously you can see here in Costco, we got really consistent higher lows, higher highs. So what does that tell us? Easily tells us there's some good solid order flow. But now here's the challenge. The stock has already rallied uh, almost $45. If we take a look at Walmart right now, where Walmart is resting only one day out of this breakout, I'm actually liking Walmart a little bit more to hit this level up here around one, what is that level, 127? Let's just map that out. That's going to end up being the first level of resistance, 137 up here. So Walmart still has about $8 and only one day popping out of that. Pepsi. Here's another one, Pepsi resting right near a breakout level. Let's zoom this out a little bit. So you can see this level right here that Pepsi needs to get through. It's right in front of that. So this would end up being a trade above 176. So let's map that out right now. For me right now, this week, Costco a little bit too beyond the optimal entry. Walmart just got to the breakout level. So I'm looking for Walmart to take out Friday's highs to start a new position. Pepsi needs to get up to the 176. 76 level, 176 level for a breakout. And McDonald's, we've obviously been watching that one and the 255 breakout level. So those are four stocks that we've been mentioning for a while now in the uh, consumer defensive area. Costco is a little bit extended, maybe make that a short one or two time, two day trade. Walmart just broke out, it needs to hold the breakout. Pepsi needs to get above that 176 level. And McDonald's is right at the breakout level. So McDonald's is actually pretty exciting today, as long as it can close above that level. Now, remember what I just mentioned before about passing the baton. I want to, I want to, um, I want to make this super clear. If you're new to my channel or if you're new to trading, if you're new to uh, what we call the order flow or the stock market power pyramid, it's critical that you first go over two things. What's the market doing and which stocks are in sync with the market? That's the that's job number one because that sets us up for some easier trades that we can hang on to for a while. Now, for a while, the market was in a strict bear market and the healthcare group was pretty strong. So let's actually take a look at that. I wanna, I wanna show you how we kind of went from one into the other. So you can see over here on the XLV, let me just make that a little bit bigger. We actually had three weeks of buying over there. So you can see while the market was going down, we had four, one, two, three weeks of well bid. Now, that was the stronger sector, and we were kind of pounding the table on that. We actually saw um, some of them breaking out in a very, very big way. We had Merck, super strong during that period of time. We had UNH kind of dancing around, but now a big bullish gap through that level. Again, we had Johnson & Johnson, right? Johnson & Johnson showing relative strength to the market, right? You can see this really quickly. Look at the market going down. Look at Johnson & Johnson picking up. And that was the first three-week rally that we had. Now, it sounds like um, three weeks, that's it. Well, three-week rally in a ripping bear market is actually pretty cool. Then, if you remember, for about a week and a half, 10 days, we were talking about Apple carrying the torch, and Apple actually started to lift a lot of the tech stocks. So last week, we talked about the fact that money was flowing into tech stocks for about a week and a half. So let's take a look at that and see what that looks like, where Apple was kind of carrying the bid. We pushed up and paused, pushed up and paused. St uh, found support right at the 50. We said this breakout level is the level. We're kind of above there. And that actually started to carry some of the tech stocks harder. And we actually saw some of the um, uh, semiconductor stocks catching a bid. And I believe after um, TSM had earnings, quite a few of them now are starting in this move. So 
what I'm trying to get across to you right now, I'm sure everybody watching this right now, again, 7.30 in the morning, you work really hard. You want to make that extra four to $6,000 per month, whatever, you know, whatever number is good for you to have that semi-retired lifestyle. Some of you have bigger goals than that. It has to start with your game plan research after the market closes. First, you have to be looking at the market and say, is the market obvious and what does that mean? Then you have to say, well, which sectors are performing in sync with the market? Those are the A plus trades that look perfect. And quite frankly, the energy sector on the bearish side of things was in sync with the market because the market was going down, energy was going down, and they were easier trades to the short side. Easier meaning they were lining up perfectly. You still had to manage the risk and entries and exits, right? Well, now we got a different side of the equation. It went from healthcare to technology. Now we're shifting on over into financials. And my gosh, we haven't seen financials take the lead in a long time long time. So the stocks that I'm watching that are at the top of my list, we get a lot of people asking about what are the basket stocks that you watch? Like what is the group of stocks? And again, everybody in our community knows that I love trading financial stocks, but they haven't been in play for a while. They're in play right now. I just took a look uh, after Goldman Sachs earnings, they're up 10%, uh, $10, excuse me, not 10%. So the stocks that I'm mostly watching in the financial sector, we're going to start out with Bank of America. Bank of America topped expectations. Now, again, we get, we're very big on this when you are reading earnings, right? Anytime that we are taking a look at the earnings numbers coming out, what should we be focusing on? We should be focusing on the growth numbers, whether or not you're a growth investor or a value investor, you still want to pay attention to the growth from quarter to quarter and year over year. So Goldman Sachs had a better quarter, but year over year was not better. So now we're still digesting that, right? Bank of America topped the expectations in revenue. So the revenue, also known as um, the sales guidance going forward, right? So if we take a look at that, benefits from higher interest rates. So this is the part of the equation right now that you're going to hear quite a bit. So as we're looking at any company, quite frankly, but specifically financials, we have the Fed, the FOMC in the equation next week, throwing some more gasoline on the stock market fire and really creating some amazing volatility. As interest rates go higher, as interest rates increase, that is should increase the margins for a lot of these financial institutions, which is why the banks, especially the regional banks right now, are catching a really strong bid, because anytime your company has wider margins, that's going to lead to more value for the shareholders. And you can see here in the Bank of America earnings, higher interest rates are increasing their margins. Now, the next one we want to talk about is, um, oh gosh, what was the, oh, IBM. IBM is actually out after today, right? Tech earnings season is about to start. IBM is the first stock to watch. Now, a big part of watching IBM right now is I've been trading IBM for the better part of the last couple of months, specifically because IBM has shown relative strength to the rest of the market. So IBM is actually what we call holding the bid. It's been staying up while the market's actually been getting hit. So when tech stocks caught a bid for about 10 days, IBM actually maintained that bid. It's resting right near a level. So let's actually take a look at that chart to bring that into focus. You can see here, while the market was going down, IBM is continuing to remain right at this breakout level. You can see it's actually gaining a little bit of steam today. So IBM after the close. So let's actually talk about some of the ideas now heading into today and for this week. As long as the financial stocks are well bid, which means higher highs and higher lows on the weekly chart, and specifically talking about Wells Fargo, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Bank of America, as long as they are well bid. And I want to show you exactly what that means and well bid, because let's not forget, they're in longer time frame moves to the downside. We're looking for that downside now to give us some feedback to say, okay, something changed. You know, we joke around about it here. There's a disturbance in the force, which means that that big force to the downside is starting to crack and we're looking a little bit to the upside. Now, again, I spent a lot of time talking about this yesterday on our on our um, Sunday swing trade game plan meeting that we have um, every Sunday at 11 o'clock. This is the first sign of a potential reversal. First sign of a potential reversal means that you need to have your first position size, which means that you need lower position size to be smart and build that position as it works in your favor because everything we're looking at right now is if the buying pressure continues, then we will start to build a position. If the buying pressure continues, we build a position and it does not follow through this week. So in other words, this week goes well offered, where if you're looking at the weekly chart, it has a lower high and a lower low. 
then that's a different story. And we would only have that small position size. So not really that much risk on our initial position for that trade. Very, very important. It's one of the most life-changing things for somebody, whether you're investing in stocks or trading stocks, to work those positions based on the quality of the order flow. So if we can admit right now the quality of the order flow is still pretty much pointing to the downside. And again, let's let's even use Goldman Sachs um, as an example. It's very hard right now to say that the buyers are definitely in charge of this stock other than Friday and pre-market today. So one of the things that I really want to help everybody understand here, and again, if you didn't know, I had two trading firms in New York City. We've traded hundreds of millions of shares at that time. What we're looking to do is piggyback when the smart money is doing something. That's called the order flow. Our job is to then determine how long has the smart money made a dollar amount, a dollar commitment to that idea. The longer and more obvious, the more confidence that we can say, well, I'm just going to join them because they've been buying this thing for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, and I don't see any reason it's going to change. Right now, we have the opposite of that. A lot of these stocks are still in bearish order flow other than one day of buying on Friday and other than this morning. So we have to say to ourselves, if I'm looking to get into one of these deals, if I'm looking to get into one of these financial trades and hang on to this for a couple of weeks, months, you know, whatever your, your time frame is, we have to be smart and say, this is the first time smart money's buying. So this should be the first time that I'm buying. That's a really easy concept to understand. Now, they might have been buying a little bit more on the way down into earnings, but they're buying as it's going down. Something that, you know, a lot of the small fries like us, we want to make sure we get a little bit of feedback so we could manage risk. But the big thing I want to get across, you want to write this down. If it's the first time they're buying and creating new higher prices, it should be the first time that we're looking to get involved. And that means our first position. Remember, smart money, big money, deep pockets. They don't just go in and say, we're buying all of our shares right now. They start to work the position. They work it a little bit on the way down. They work it a little bit more on the way up. And then we start to see higher highs and higher lows. If we get follow through and we see a push and a pause over the next 10 days, then we could start to have a little bit more conviction that buying is a little bit more aggressive than maybe anticipated. But please, if you learn anything from me here, and it doesn't matter whether you're a short-term trader or swing trader, position trader, or investor, the trading history, the greatest traders in history, the greatest investors in history will tell you that they work positions. So now we're going to take that over into a couple of other ideas here. First, let's actually take a look at what exactly that means uh, on the chart here. So you can see now on Goldman Sachs, what we're looking for is this. We're looking for this week, which is the same as over here. We're looking for this week to go well bid, which is higher highs and higher lows. So if we map that out, what we're looking for is for this to happen this week. Now, I know I can hear a lot of people that are, um, you know, talking about, well, we can't predict the week. You're right. <laughs> I'm not predicting the week. And this is something that's very, very important for you to understand because this reduces 90% of your trading stress, which is it's our job to build scenarios. It's our job to say, if the market does this, and if the sector does this, and if this group of stocks does this, then I plan to trade and here's the amount of shares I plan to get. And here's my initial profit target. That's if this happens, if this happens, then I plan to do this. The trouble that traders get in is they say, if this happens, but it doesn't, they still trade anyway. So if the market opens higher this morning and we start to see selling throughout the week, then you know that we're not getting followed through and that bear market is still in place. So you either look for short sales, reduce your position size on the opportunities that you bought, at least that's what I do, until we get feedback and how it works its way back into the market. I can't stress this strongly enough. If the 2022 stock market is driving you bananas right now, maybe you've taken a little bit of a bigger loss this year. It simply means that you can probably identify when it's obvious, but you can't identify yet when it changes. That's the big piece that a lot of people are missing. And let's also talk about that on the profitable side of things. If the market's going up and it hasn't changed, you have to hold that and earn more on your winners. But if the market's going up and it pulls back, you have to recognize when it pulled back and Smart traders will either scale out or get out. Now we're talking more on the active investing or the active trading side of things. If you're if you're a, a lifetime buyer in some of these companies, you, know, you can do like Warren Buffett talks about his best time to sell is never. There's a lot of dispute about whether he does that or not because there's plenty of companies that he has sold. I think he's probably more talking about the companies that he owns outright. But even 
short-term traders. You still need to understand, is it obvious? Which right now it's obviously down. And when does it change? So the argument that we're making for this week, for the week of July 18th, is, is the stock market reversing and how do we recognize that? And that's actually what I just gave you is recognizing this. Now, it depends on what time frame you're looking at. If you're a little bit more active in short time, you can see that month, uh, Friday actually did go bearish gap, bullish gap, and now we're looking for this to unfold. So we're already opening up um, well above uh, Friday. We're at 3.05. My gosh, we're all the way up here uh, in, in Goldman Sachs, which actually is ironically taking us into this gap fill right into this resistance. So that's a pretty obvious level. The one other story we want to talk about today in a big way is um, Delta and Boeing news. Now, again, if you've been a regular viewer of the channel, you know last week a few times we've been talking about Boeing, the breakout above 140, the big expansion in volume. Volume means the smart money is actually using real money to create those big green candles that we looked at. So we had an explosion, a pause, another explosion, and now we're breaking through again. So again, if you're learning how to do your nightly research, if you're learning how to do your game planning, your treasure hunt every single night, make sure that volume increases is one of the volume scans that you run. And we actually had a big list of stocks on Friday that traded a significant increase in volume. And what does that mean? That means something happened in those stocks, something changed in those stocks. So remember, if a, and think about owning a, a store. Let's say you own a store that, had, that sells clothing, you know, whatever it happens to be. Let's say that you know went all the way up here and you sold um, X amount of jackets and that's great, right? But what if you went all the way up here and you sold that many more jackets? What was the actual dollar amount that sold? So hitting a price versus hitting a price with a lot of volume behind it is very, very different. So Boeing looking for follow through. Now, the question is what kind of risk reward do we have on Boeing right now? So here's the price action we're talking about last week. And if we drop the volume in there, you can see Look at this volume day right there, breaking out finally out of this 140, paused. And it, by the way, this is actually very similar. We're going to end up in looking at in um, some of the financial study that exploded last week. So we've got an explosion, a pause, an explosion, and a higher high, higher high, higher low. And now the stock is up $6, 4%. Uh, gosh, where is it? 153, like right up in that area, right over there, right over there. So now what's the next level in Boeing? We're actually looking at up here in this level around 190 as the next level. But what is the stop loss? This is actually now gone four days with pretty big volume and had a pretty good push. The start of this move was around 137 and change. So let's actually map that out right now. So if we could say that this big move started right here on the low of this day, and now we are up at one. 50 right around there 150 right so that's actually one let's say 137 to 154 right that's a pretty big move that's already a 17 dollar move in boeing now what we need to determine whether or not if boeing is something we want to be looking to hang on to as a swing trade over the next week or so the next level of resistance is in the mid 170 so 153 to 170 is the next leg but the stock now is a little bit extended on the daily chart. It's already gone $17. So if you hear me talk about the optimal entry and the number one reason that really smart traders have trouble in the market with a buy it, it's in the list. It's going up. I buy it. As soon as you buy it, it goes down for three days and then goes up and does exactly what you thought it would do. And I'm going to actually point something out. That's one of my favorite setups for today and for this week that did exactly that uh, within the last two weeks, right? So Boeing now is already up $17. So if you're buying today based on the news, you're $17 after the move started. So what does that mean from a position size and a profit target? It's $17 after the move started. So for me personally, I love the idea. I will actively short-term trade it with a little bit more position size. But if I'm looking for that next move up towards the mid 170s, after that $17 move, I need to be smart on my initial entry because it's already gone $17 and maybe it'll pop this morning, probably pull back a little bit because that's what the stock normally does. So I'm gonna have less shares on my initial entry because the risk reward that might've been here at the start of the move is now all the way down there. If, the, if that's what reward potential is in there based on what it normally does, this might be a sell the news event because it's already gone $17. So let's bring that all home. 
I like the buying opportunity for myself in Boeing this week, but my initial entry will be less shares for this next swing trade because it's already gone $17 and because now the news is out. We all know that sell the news is a big part of Wall Street. So I like the idea. It'll be a first position looking for it to pause before that next move up towards 170. Now, I want to give you the other idea that was that's probably at the top of my list this week, um, which is this stock. Who has been trading incredibly, incredibly well. I had a Goldman uh, JP Morgan upgrade over here. And this is actually the scenario. So if I could ask you to just visualize what's going on in Boeing right now and make sure that we learn from recent price action. So Chewy exploded to the upside. A lot of people here were talking about it four days after it exploded. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's already gone what it normally does. We need to let it pause. It paused and then gave a really good trade after that. So if you could visualize that, that's what we're looking for in the, in the Boeing idea, which is right here. Here's the upgrade. The stock rallied one, two, three, four, five days and then pulled back. So you chase the move, it pulls back, you get stopped out, and then it does this. So we wanna make sure that we're looking for that same exact type price action in Boeing. Now, Chewy here now is actually paused for two consecutive days, right at a breakout level, and the next level of significant selling is kind of up in this area over here in the mid 50s. So for me right now, for this week, I'm looking for Chewy Assuming it breaks out of the last two-day consolidation to the upside, which it looks like it's going to, it's up about 80 cents at this point, I'm looking for that to take off and make its way up towards the mid-50s. So let's say somewhere between 52 and 55 up in this area over here, breaking out of this. Now, again, you'll know a big part of what we do, keeping it simple, you got a big triple bottom here, then you got a push and a pause, a push and a pause, a push and a pause. Now, the one thing I want to point out, and this is very, very important, You'll hear me say that they're holding the bid. Holding the bid simply means that it paused, but there's different ways of holding the bid. And one type of holding the bid means that the stock is actually stronger than it might just appear on the chart. So if you go up and pull back, that's still holding the bid, that's still strong. But if you go up and go sideways, that's a stronger bid because they're not letting it pull back. So when you have a stronger bid and it went sideways for two days in that consolidation, I'm looking for this to break out. Now, let's be adults here. Let's talk as actual traders, right? Not somebody who's, who's saying every trade works. That, that doesn't happen. We have to manage the downside. So if this stock breaks out, Chewy, C-H-W-Y, and it does break out, I'm going to be looking to buy that breakout. If the breakout follows through, I'm going to look to add to that position on the first push. If I buy the breakout and the breakout reverses, I'll simply take my loss and then go to the next trade. What I just explained is the way that trading can be so much less stressful because I am not guessing. We're simply building the argument for why we want to be a buyer of Chewy. We're assessing the profit potential and we're saying, great, if it starts to move in our favor, we'll put that trade on and great, <laughs> we have our profit target. And when we plan to add to that position. Also, if that trade breaks out and pulls back, I already know what I'm willing to risk on the trade. If it doesn't follow through, I just get out and then I go and look for the next idea. Now, here's the thing that you want to write down. I just talked about how I plan to manage a profitable trade and how I plan to manage a trade that doesn't work out. If I do my job, if you do your job and we stack the order flow, stack the odds, stack the market in our favor and a trade follows through, cool. <laughs> if we do the same thing, stack, 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 and we put the trade on and it doesn't follow through, that doesn't make it a bad idea. It simply makes it one of the trade in the totality of our edge that doesn't follow through. So if you learn the most important thing you could learn from me specifically is managing the downside is simply paying the expenses to run our trading business. And the more you really accept that fact and really understand it, my gosh, trading becomes so much easier because now you're not holding on to big losing trades anymore. You're not, you're not questioning whether or not you actually forgot how to trade. It's just simply one of those bills you have to pay to run your trading. So let's actually go to the other side of that and take a look at if Chewy breaks out, I get into the trade and it comes back, I just simply need to know where my stop loss is going to be, which is quite frankly, just keep it simple. It's just going to be somewhere below this level, probably right around the $40 level. So that's it. That's how to map out the trade. I'm looking to be a buyer. The market's strong. If it follows through, great. I'll put the first piece of the trade on. If it follows through, we know we're looking somewhere between 52 and 55 as the initial profit target. And then we shift over into a trailing stop loss mode to see if we can get some more out of the trade. That's a big part, too. Don't limit your profits, but you do need to know what your initial profit target is, your initial expectation, so that you accept that risk and you're comfortable with that risk. 
So if we head up there, cool. If we head down there, I'm okay because I, I accept that dollar amount. And if it goes down there, I just kick it out, pay that expense and go to the next trade. That's real trading, everybody. And that's how you keep your sanity, especially the way the market's been. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. We've got earnings. Goldman Sachs came out this morning. Bank of America came out this morning. IBM is coming out this afternoon. Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan last week, and Citigroup, which was the big dog that carried the entire market. So today, we're looking for what we might call a little bit of a bullish echo. So because Goldman Sachs actually came out and earnings were perceived as pretty good, and you can see this is the kind of candle that we're looking for today. It's actually going to open up here right at this level. Um, we're looking for Citigroup. We are looking for Wells Fargo. We are looking for Morgan Stanley, and we are looking for JP Morgan, as well as Bank of America, to have a good day. Now, I want to be clear about this. This is very, very important. Yep, we actually talked about Boeing before. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. That was actually off of this news um, with Delta. Oh, excuse me. Let me put that in there. That's actually off of this news with Delta. Now, the big thing I want to talk about here today is we just built an argument for all of this good news coming out in a bear market, which bear market, bullish news, not being taken as bullish news. That's kind of exciting if you're a buyer of stocks, right? But we need to manage the other side of the market. What if all of these stocks open higher? All this good news is out of the equation. And now we start to hear some other conversations about what the Fed's going to do. Is it going to be three quarters of a point? Is it going to be a dollar? I think it's going to be uh, 75 basis points, uh, not a dollar, a full point. Um, so now we need to pay attention. Remember what we said before, you need to know when it changes. Spotting the opportunity, knowing when it changes is two completely different skills. So if we open up higher today and today's price action finishes, and then tomorrow we take out today's lows, that means that the buying pressure has subsided and we want to reevaluate that. So that's why it's very important that today is initial position size on these longer term trades to the upside. Because remember the quote that you want to know, first sign of a reversal is first position size. It's just smart trading. There's a lot to go over today. I'm really, really excited about today. I just want to, you could screenshot this again here today uh, for the ideas heading into the rotation. So obviously we looked at consumer defensive. We gave you a bunch of lists of stocks there. We talked about some stocks breaking out there. Um, Nvidia, a lot of people are talking about Nvidia right now on the industrial side of things. You know, I just, I want to finish up with something. Somebody had mentioned Caterpillar before, and this is a really important lesson. Caterpillar has been in the dumps. I mean, I, I, if, if I remember the number correctly, 20 out of the last 22 days are bearish in Caterpillar, meaning they close below the open. Caterpillar is not the greatest idea right now. You're basically just hoping that it turns around and starts to head back to the upside. Let's just take a look at that. So you can see where Caterpillar is right now. Sure, the stock's positive right now, but here's the thing you need to say to yourself. Yes, it's going up right now, but is it the best idea? So we're looking at some of the industrial stocks that actually are breaking out. I'm probably going to the other side of the market in that Boeing opportunity because putting a trade on and then hoping the market moves in your favor versus putting a trade on because it's already going in that direction, completely different trading opportunities. And the more you learn how to do that, the easier trading becomes a lot less stressful. Uh, so I have to head on out, everybody. Hopefully you have enough ideas for this morning and for the week. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button and hit the like button uh, if we helped you out today. And um, I want you to know I got you back. Let's head out into trade this week. We've got a lot of good stuff going on this week. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens this week and how that's going to force the Fed to react next week. All right. Have an awesome day, everybody. I'll speak to you soon.